Hello and welcome to part 7 of this Kerbal Space Program 2 video series covering the Force Science update. So in part 6, as you can see, we landed our lander on the surface of the moon by the mysterious signal, which was the moon arch, um, obviously. Um, and in this video, we're going to be launching from the surface again and rendezvousing and docking with a command module in orbit around the moon. So yeah, let's get straight into this video. Um, so the first thing we are going to do is we're actually going to set up the command module uh, for the rendezvous manoeuvre. Uh, because as you remember, in the last video we did a deorbit manoeuvre, which means that the orbit isn't circular, and also the orbit has actually moved quite away north of the current position that the lander is in. So we need to change our inclination and also circularise the orbit. So we'll right click on the um, command module and hit control and now the first thing we're going to do is raise our periapsis uh, if you were approaching the periapsis then you could just lower the apoapsis but because the apoapsis is the first on the orbit we're going to raise the periapsis so the first thing we'll do is we'll turn off RCS and activate SAS and then we'll point the rocket at prograde and then once it's there we can just warp forwards to a point just ahead of the apoapsis. You could create a manoeuvre if you wanted, but this I find it's just as easy doing it this way, and if anything, if anything, it's quicker. So now we're there, we can see that we're about 25 seconds away from the apoapsis. So once the timer on the uh, orbital info panel reaches zero, we'll increase the throttle a little bit and uh, get our orbit relatively circular. If you do go a little bit far like that, just use RCS to bring it back down again. And the reason why I want this to be circular is because it just makes the actual rendezvous, rendezvous manoeuvre much easier. Uh, because if you have one circular orbit and then one orbit which is eccentric, i.e. oval, um, then it just means actually intercepting the two orbits can be a little bit awkward, but this way it will mean that it should be pretty easy. So now that is done. The only other thing we need to do with the command module is actually change our inclination. So we're going to do exactly as we did in the last video. We're going to line up the uh, moon so that the marker for the lander is in the centre of the planet. And then we're also going to line up our orbit so it's just one long line. And then once there we'll place a manoeuvre node on the edge of the orbit. And we're going to lower down our inclination so it's a little way below the actual marker. And now there, we can turn off RCS, point at the manoeuvre, and then perform this burn as well. In fact, before we do, you can see it has raised our apoapsis again, so we are actually going to just do a little bit more tinkering with the actual manoeuvre as well. Let's try and get our apoapsis down to roughly the same as our periapsis. And that should be good enough. So yeah, now we are ready. We can warp towards the manoeuvre and, as I say, perform this burn. And it's only going to be a very small burn, so I'm just going to use partial throttle and wait until the blue line matches up with the orange one. And then for the final bit, we'll just use RCS. So yeah, now that is set, uh, the other thing we need to do is we want to make sure that our command module is a little way ahead on its orbit from the lander, because what we're going to do is we're going to get the lander into a lower orbit than the command module. And the general principle is if a ship is in a lower orbit to the ship that you're actually trying to rendezvous with, then um, you want the ship you're rendezvousing with to be a little way ahead because the lower an orbit is the faster the rocket is actually moving and uh, alternatively if you're aiming to have your lander or the ship you're aiming to dock with um, lower than the lander 
then you would need to make sure that the lander is ahead of the command module. But anyway, yeah, now that is set, we are going to right click on the lander icon and hit control. We're also going to target the command module. And as I say, we're just going to do a little warp forwards so that the command module is a little way ahead of the lander itself. So now, if we go back to the command module, you can see, or the lander even, you can see on the uh, nav ball that we do have a marker for the target now. And what I would ordinarily do is I would just warp forwards a little bit more until the mark is just about to leave the uh, top of the nav ball. Um, and we need to be careful when doing this because we don't want the mark to be going below the horizon because we are going to be targeting that when we launch. But anyway, now we are ready to launch. Um, so, as you know, this is a two-stage lander, and if you've seen my other moon videos, you'll know that when launching a two-stage lander from the surface, if we were to just detach the top and go straight up, then the projected, well, the trajectory line wouldn't actually appear. So, what we'll do to make sure that we do get our trajectory line is we'll increase the throttle a little bit until the lander raises just off the surface. And then once there, we're going to cut the throttle, stage, increase the throttle a little bit more. And now we need to pause the game because we did have a um, probe core in the bottom half. But as you can see, it's just been blown up by the engine, which is a shame because I like to have a probe core in there. But anyway, now because of that, the target marker has actually disappeared off of the nav ball. So we'll go to the map, we'll retarget the command module. And now, if we hit the target button and start the game again, it will point straight towards the uh, command module. And what we're doing now is we're aiming to get our apoapsis to about 50,000 meters above the surface. We did go a little bit far there, but what I'll do is I'll just use RCS to boost us back because we do want to be a fair decent amount lower than the actual target ship because that'll mean that when we come to do our rendezvous maneuver we'll have a bit more flexibility but anyway now we are there what we'll do is we'll go onto the map and you can see that our current inclination in relation to the target ship is 0 0.5 degrees uh, and we want to get that down to zero degrees um, and I'll explain exactly why we do that in a moment um, but because the ascending node is before the apoapsis, um, I, mean, I mean you could go into orbit and then adjust your inclination but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to place a maneuver node on the ascending node and change the inclination before we even do our circularization burn so we'll pull down on or out on the anti-normal arrow see we've gone a little bit far so we'll make sure that we are at zero degrees and there we go and now all we need to do is of course turn off RCS and point at the maneuver and this is only a three delta V burn so because this ship is so light the uh, RCS do is much more effective whereas on heavier ships the RCS could take a lot longer but anyway because it's only a three delta v burn we're just going to use rcs for this burn instead of the main throttle because we do need to make the most of the fuel in our tanks because as you can see we only have a very small amount of fuel left so we'll warp towards the maneuver and once there we'll just use as i say rcs to bring our inclination down a little bit And now that we are matched, it's just a matter of getting into orbit. So hopefully we'll have enough fuel. Um, as I say, I did overdo the initial ascent a little bit. Um, but we'll start off by creating the maneuver and seeing how far we can get with this. So we'll increase our orbit. And we're going to aim to try and get this circular again. So we'll just do what we always do when circularizing our orbit. We'll play around, well, we'll get the markers to about 90 degrees from the maneuver node and then we'll just play around with the green and blue arrows until it is nice and circular so 
229 or 5229 by 5245 should do the trick and we do have enough fuel to actually get us into orbit as well so that's that's pretty good so anyway now that is set we'll turn off rcs again and point at the maneuver and perform this burn And I am only going to use partial throttle so that we don't overdo the burn because, as I say, we only have a finite amount of fuel. And we are going to just use RCS to bring us up a little bit further. You know what, that, that should do it. Um, if you do find that when you do the launch you can't actually circularize um, the burn, as long as you, in fact, even if you don't get the um, apoapsis or the periapsis above the horizon, uh, you can use RCS to actually complete the burn and because like I say this ship is so light the RCS is much more effective and that's one of the reasons why I like to have so much mono propellant in my uh, my rockets because it's almost like a backup fuel supply it does add mass uh, but it's kind of a trade-off between mass and making sure that you can actually do what you're trying to do but yeah anyway that's our orbit set and as I say we're now in a nice circular orbit and so is the command module so it's just a matter of uh, making sure that we are actually intercepting the uh, command module. Now, before I do this, as I mentioned, we did want to make sure that our inclination was at zero degrees, and the reason for that is because when we um, extend our orbit, if we were at an inclination to the target, then what would happen is our orbit would actually either go over or under the target ship's orbit and we want it to be intersecting it almost perfectly so that is basically the main reason why we need to make sure that we are always at the correct inclination because otherwise it's almost impossible to get an accurate uh, intercept but anyway now that's out of the way we'll create a maneuver anywhere ahead of our ship on our orbit and then we're going to increase our apoapsis until the two orbits intersect one another and as you can see we've now got these markers here and what they represent is our closest point of approach or the distance to the target ship so when we reach the 1A marker we would be 19,119 meters from the target and when we reach the 2 markers we would actually be 10,000 and the reason why it goes 1A and 1A is what that or 1A and 2A sorry is what that's saying is that our orbit is going to be going beyond the target orbit and then back in again whereas if we were to pull it back a little bit and we only had the 1a marker or the 1a and 1b markers then that means that we are actually just about touching the target ship's orbit but anyway yeah so as you can see that say we would be 18,000 meters from the target ship and the way to get that down is we're going to move the maneuver node around our orbit and we're aiming to get this below a kilometer. So you can see there, we can even get down to about 100 meters, uh, but it's best not to go too close, because if you do, there's a risk that if you overdo the warp in the future, then you could end up crashing into the target ship. But anyway, now that is set, we can turn off RCS and point at the maneuver and then perform this burn. And as I mentioned, because this is only a 13 delta V burn and the RCS on this lander is so effective, then we're only going to use RCS for this maneuver. We don't even need to use the actual throttle. So we'll warp forwards and then we'll boost forwards with H to actually uh, complete this maneuver. And as I say, if you do have a heavier ship, then you'll need to use the actual throttle for this. But I'm just going to use RCS because it will do just nicely. And it's saying we're at 2,673, so we'll keep adjusting our height. And now we are at 494, which is almost perfect. So yeah, that is, that is us on an intercept course with the command module. So the next thing we'll do is we will click on a point a little way ahead of our intercept markers. And then we will time warp to point. And if we now go onto the map and have a look around, we can now see the marker for the actual command module. So, the next thing we need to do, and this is very important, is we need to make sure that our velocity bug is set to target. Uh, because now, what will happen is, when we point retrograde on the nav ball, 
What's going to happen is um, we want to do a burn at retrograde. However, technically this is actually a prograde burn because we're aiming to raise our periapsis to match the orbit with the command module. Because if, for example, I was to go onto orbit, you can now see that the retrograde marker is on the opposite side of the nav ball. So we always need to make sure we are set um, to target on the velocity bug. And the other thing that you can notice is it's now saying our speed is 12 0.3 meters per second and that refers to our relative velocity in relation to the target ship so we're actually traveling at around 12, 12 meters per second difference to the speed of the target ship um, but yeah so now that is set all we need to do is warp forwards carefully until our distance from the target is below a kilometer And then once there, what we're going to do is we're going to do a small burn just to get our velocity down to around about zero meters per second. And then once we get close, you can see it can start wobbling around a bit. We'll just use RCS just to try and slow ourselves down a little bit. And now we're at zero meters per second. That means we're actually flying in exactly at the same speed as the target ship, which you can now see there. So the next thing we need to do is we need to point at the target ship. And before we even do our final approach, what we're going to do is we're going to go on to, well, we can either go onto the map and select the ship, or if we're close enough, we can use the square bracket key to actually uh, flip to that ship. And then what we want to do now is if we go onto the map and zoom in, we're going to move around until we can see the grey icon, which is our lander we'll right click on that and set as target and then if we now turn on sas and point the command module at the target it will now point the front of the ship directly at the target ship so you can see it's just there is the lander and now what that means is that the docking port will be pointed directly at the docking port of the lander um, now, if you're using a docking port that's not on the front of the ship, what you'll need to do before that is you'll need to right-click on the docking port and hit Control from here. And that just means that the uh, docking port will then be what's pointing at the the, um, the target ship and not the actual uh, centre of the rocket. And the other thing you'd also need to do is, on the command module or the lander, you would need to actually target the docking port and not the center of the ship but if you want more information on how docking uh, rendezvous and docking maneuvers work i do already have a tutorial for that on my uh, channel so please feel free to check that out if you want to um, but anyway yeah we'll go back to the lander and now we're going to use this to do our final approach so we will use h now keyboard to boost forwards towards the command module and we're going to go to about 2.5 meters per second and we're doing that because we're quite already quite close if you're at a fair distance then i would recommend going no faster than 10 meters per second because we are going to need to slow down before we actually reach the uh, command module and if you're going too fast then there is a risk you could end up crashing into it and destroying the docking ports which would not be ideal um, but anyway the other thing we need to do is we also need to make sure that the green prograde marker on the nav ball is inside of the white target marker and that way it means that we are heading straight towards the target ship so yeah now we are set we can now do a very careful warp forwards until we start to get close and once we get a little closer we will stop the warp make sure that everything is aligned properly on the nav ball and then we're also going to slow our approach speed down to below one meter per second and the slower you are going, the more uh, responsive the RCS can be. But if you go, like, for example, if we go down to, say, about 0 0.2 metres per second, it can actually be a little bit awkward making sure it's all lined up, which is why I go around about 1 metre per second, no lower than 5 metres per second anywhere. Yeah, now we're set. All we need to do is just wait for the two ships to dock. Um, if you want to get a better view of the docking as well, one thing you can do is you can detach the camera with the arrow keys and then you can just look around and that'll give you a better idea of how the approach is doing. But now we're about to get there, we'll slow down a tiny bit and there we are. 
So yeah, that is basically the best way I found to uh, do a rendezvous and docking maneuver. Um, and as I said, I already do have a video online uh, actually describing that in a bit more detail. So um, please feel free to check that out in your own time if you want to. But yeah, so now the first thing we'll do is obviously quick save so we don't make a mistake and have to do all that again. And then the next thing we need to do is make sure that the Kerbal is moved from the command or from the lander back into the command module because the last thing we want to do is jettison the command uh, the lander and end up leaving our Kerbal inside. So we'll put Val back in the gumball. And then the next thing we want to do is right click on the command module and hit control from here. Because if you watch the uh, nav ball, you can now see that the nav ball has flipped because we were still controlling from the lander. And that's important because what we're going to do now is a deorbit maneuver to crash the lander back into the surface of the moon because we don't need that anymore. Uh, we don't want to be uh, doing the retrograde burn when still controlling the lander because then we'll actually be technically burning prograde because we're going to use this engine. And of course the other thing we need to do as well is just to turn off the lander engine as well so that doesn't affect our burn. But anyway, now that's set, we will activate SAS and we'll point the ship at retrograde. And this is going to be almost exactly like we did when we were doing our initial uh, landing descent. Um, the only difference this time is instead of going to 10,000 meters, we're going to go down to just below the horizon. So we'll increase the throttle and once our periapsis reaches minus figures, we can then cut the throttle and detach the lander. And making sure we are still on the main ship, we're going to then point our ship prograde. And once there, we'll just increase the throttle and get ourselves back up above 60,000 meters. there we are back into orbit so now the uh, lander is on its way with the collision course for the surface so that'll get rid of that and now uh, there are a couple of things you could do um, obviously if you aren't planning on doing anything else then now would be the time to return back to Kerbin and as I mentioned in my moon video um, then the way to do that is to create a maneuver node on the uh, side well basically the moon is moving in this direction and when trying to get to an inner planet uh, you want to burn retrograde to the direction of the uh, moon's travel whereas in this video we're actually going to do another mission because we have quite a lot of delta v left in this rocket we've still got another stage to go so you can see on the mission tracker that we still have the escaping kerbin mission to do and uh, you don't have to do this now, you could always just leave this until you go to Juno for the first time and it will automatically um, complete. But we're going to try and get as much science as we can on this mission. So when trying to get away from a planet, so if say we go into one of the upper planets from Kerbin or in this case going from the moon and trying to escape Kerbin's atmosphere or SOI even, you want to uh, burn prograde to the travel of the orbital body that you are orbiting so anyway yeah in this case we'll create a maneuver node on the back of the planet and we're going to increase our apoapsis just so that our um, orbit skips out of the moon's sphere of influence and now as you can see it sent our periapsis or apoapsis high above Kerbin whereas if we'd have gone the other way it would have been somewhere down here so the next thing we'll do is we will highlight the apoapsis and we're going to move the manoeuvre node around a little bit just to see what the highest point is and you can see it's about 55 kilometres and then we're going to continue increasing our apoapsis until we just skip out of Kerbin's sphere influence. And the reason we're doing it this way is we don't want to be going too far because the faster you leave the sphere of influence, the harder it is to actually get back in. So now we're there, we can move the maneuver node around a little bit and you can see it's stopping moving there. So we'll reduce our apoapsis a tiny little bit. As I say, we're doing this, oh, we're going the wrong way there, aren't we? Um, as I say, we're doing this because we don't want to be leaving Kerbin's SOI too fast. So we'll get that set. Move it around again, you can see there we are, that is 
just where we're skipping out. So we'll leave it there. And now we are ready to uh, escape Kerbin's SOI. So we'll point our ship at the manoeuvre, making sure RCS is off, off, of, as core, uh, off of course. <laughs> and then once there, we can warp to the manoeuvre and perform the burn. Now, you can see we aren't actually skipping out just yet, so we'll just use RCS to boost forwards a little bit further. And then, once we have left Kerbin's SOI, we'll be ready to uh, perform this manoeuvre. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to ditch this tank now as well, because it's, it's only got 14 Delta V in it, so we don't actually need this one anymore. So, I will uh, decouple that. And then, what we can do is, if we zoom right out, you can see uh, that our point that we would be leaving Kerbin's SOI is over here, uh, which is signified, obviously, by this blue line. And we could potentially click on the orbit and time warp to a point just outside of Kerbin's SOI. However, there's a couple of reasons why uh, it, that's not advisable. The first one is that, as you can see, our orbit is coming back around again, and there is a risk that we could accidentally um, click on the wrong orbit and end up doing a full orbit of Kerbal, uh, which is less than ideal. Um, the other reason is we only, as I say, want to be skipping out of Kerbin's SOI. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to zoom back into Kerbin, and we are going to warp to a point just before we leave Kerbin's sphere of influence. So we'll warp to a point there. Now's a good time to F5 as well, just to make sure we don't make a mistake. Or should I say, if we do make a mistake, we'll then be able to uh, quick load and fix it. And now what we're going to do is we'll press home on our keyboards to focus back on our command module. And now we're just going to carefully warp forwards until we just skip out of Kerbin's sphere of influence. And there we are, that's that mission done. So, one thing you might find, and I, do, I presume this is a bug at the moment, but when leaving Kerbin's sphere of influence, sometimes the nav ball kind of breaks, and as you can see, uh, if we click on any of the arrows, the nav ball is doing absolutely nothing at the moment. So to fix that, the best way I've found is just to do a quick save and then press F9 to quick load. And now you can see that the nav ball is working. Uh, and that's important because we obviously need to get back into Kerbin's SOI. Um, now the way i found best to do that is if we right click on Kerbin and set that as the target and then if we hit the target button on the SAS control bar you can see that our ship is now pointed directly at Kerbin. Now if we go onto the map and increase the throttle we should be able to get straight back into Kerbin's SOI. Of course I need to actually activate the engine first. there we are so yeah that's uh, basically how to get straight back in so what we'll do now is we will warp just inside of Kerbin's SOI and now it's just a matter of getting back home so there's a couple of ways you could do this you could just straight up do a retrograde burn from where we are but we're going to do another mid-course correction maneuver and we'll place that once again somewhere in the middle of the orbit around where the hump is create a maneuver plan and we could either do a retrograde burn or you could also do a radial in burn as well but we'll just do retrograde for the time being and for this one we're actually aiming to get our periapsis at above 70,000 meters not far above so what I'm going to do is I'm going to aim for about 75,000 metres. And the reason I do that is you don't have to. You could go straight into Kerbin's atmosphere and do a re-entry that way. But I find there is a risk um, when doing that that you could end up skipping straight back out again and having to go back around, which 
is a bit annoying to be honest uh, so what i always do in this scenario and it's the same as when i'm coming from any of the outer planets as well is i'll go a little bit above and then once we get close we're actually going to do a um, deceleration burn to slow us slow ourselves down and enter into uh, Kerbin's atmosphere properly so now that that maneuver set all we need to do is as always point at the maneuver and then warp to the maneuver and you'll find when doing particularly long warps the warp will actually stop early so you can see it's still saying we've got 19 minutes left so we'll just hit the warp to maneuver button again and that'll take us down to about 40 seconds then as usual we'll do a manual warp until we reach around about 10 seconds and then we'll go full throttle and reduce our periapsis it doesn't matter if you do go a little bit over like i did then because we're actually going to delete the maneuver node now and highlight the maneuver and you can see we did go a bit far there so because we're so far out and the further out from a maneuver you are or from your periapsis you are the more effect rcs actually has uh, but yeah, because we're so far out, we can just use N on our keyboards to boot, bo boost backwards with RCS until we get to about 75,000 metres. And there we are. Like I say, now we are going to do what's called a deorbit manoeuvre. Um, but before we do that, just one little note. You can see that there's a little marker there, and sometimes some of the information on the screen does get a little bit stuck. And to get rid of that, you just go to the flight view and then go back onto the map and you can see now that mark has gone so anyway uh it's just that stuff kind of gets in the way and annoys me sometimes but as i say what we'll do now is we will focus on curbing and then once close we can create a maneuver ahead of our periapsis and if we do a retrograde burn what's going to happen now is it's going to start lowering our projected periapsis and we are aiming to get the periapsis down to about 25,000 meters so um, this what I would ordinarily do is I would ordinarily burn the engine until the tank is empty but we still have quite a lot of delta V in this so we're not going to use up all the fuel in this burn um, but as I say, what I'd normally do is I would burn the tank until it's empty and then if you move the manoeuvre node around you can see that it's lowering our periapsis the further away we get from curbing. So we'll get our periapsis, as I say, to about 25,000 metres. And once there, all we need to do is turn off RCS, point at the manoeuvre, warp to the manoeuvre and then perform this burn. There we are on our way to re-entering Kerbin. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much um, all there is to do with this now. Um, obviously, the only other thing we need to do is point our ship either at normal or anti-normal, and then jettison the tank and engines. So we'll do that. Point retrograde again. And yeah, now it's just a matter of re-entering Kerbin's atmosphere. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is for this video. Um, as you can see, we might be coming in over the mountains here, so we could probably even get a little bit more science when we land. Uh, but I'll do that once I get down. Um, but yeah, like I say, that's all there is for this one. I hope you learn a thing or two about how to rendezvous and dock. Uh, if you want a bit more information on that, as I said, I do have a tutorial on that in my tutorials playlist, so please feel free to check that out. Um, we're also going to find out what the next mission is in the next video, so uh, I hope you will tune in for that one. Um, if you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to like and subscribe. Um, I would also appreciate it if you'd leave a comment as well and let me know what you thought, and hopefully I will see you in the next one. <laughs>